Hello and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. In today's video, I want to show you how I am implementing both a loop and block schedule to help our homeschool day flow better and to ensure everything is getting done. So if that is something you are interested in, I would love if you stick around. All right, welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, I am a homeschool mom to a third grader. We love all things books, homeschool, and sharing our journey with you. And if that is something that you are interested in, I would love if you would stick around. All right, so before we get started on building a block and a loop schedule, what are you going to need? You're going to need a notebook, a piece of paper, okay? Nothing fancy. You don't need a fancy planner or anything. You just need a piece of paper. You're also going to need a pencil or a pen or your preferred writing utensil. And sometimes colors just make things better. So if you want some markers, get some of those. Not necessary. This right here is going to do the job, okay? But you do need to write some things down. The very first thing before we get started is... Let's talk a little bit about what is a block schedule, what is a loop schedule, why are we using these things together. So first things first is a block schedule, okay? Now this is my idea of what I think a block schedule is. There's other people that may think this is something totally different. To me, a block schedule is a block of time that I am going to put different subjects in, okay? Let's say I have a language arts block, okay? So I'm just gonna say language arts. During this time, I'm going to do everything that I feel is language arts related, okay? So I'm just gonna jot down a few things, writing, reading, spelling, grammar, whatever you think is language arts. Everything that you think is that, put there. Now I'm gonna put math, okay? I have a math block. So this could include logic. It's gonna include my primary lessons. It's gonna include Beast Academy, um, online games or games, okay? All of those things could go in a math block. Am I doing all of these all the time? Nope, that's where our loop schedule is gonna come in. But this is a block schedule, okay? Next, let's say I want a block of um, outside. Okay. Maybe this includes nature time or play time. Maybe it could even, you could have a, um, art block. All right. Whatever you want. Oops. Should have been like art block up here. Painting, um, sculptures, you know, whatever you want to do. This is a block schedule, okay? Now, this is not a schedule yet, but a block schedule is where we to put like items in a block, okay? Now, let's talk about a loop schedule. What is a loop schedule? A loop schedule, in my opinion, is where we take things that don't necessarily need to be done on an everyday basis and we're going to loop them. For instance, I don't need to do history or science or geography every single day, okay? Your loop could look different. Maybe you want something different. Let's say you're doing a language, okay? You wanna do another language, but you don't necessarily need to do it every day. Let's say day one, I'm gonna do history. Day two, I'm gonna do science. Day three, I'm gonna do geography. Day four, I'm going to do language arts excuse me, I'm going to do a foreign language. My next day, I'm going to loop back up here to history and I'm gonna do history again. And then I'm gonna do science the next time, geography the next time, language the next time, and I'm gonna loop that back up here. Now, those are gonna to continue to rotate every single time. This could change for you depending on what season that you're in. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I like our current history or I like our current science and I wanna add that a little bit more, okay? So let's say, all right, I'm gonna do history, but then I'm gonna do science and I wanna do history again before I do geography. And so you can add in those things that you want to hit a little bit more. 
So this time we would do history on day one, science on day two, we're gonna hit history again on day three, then geography on day four, language on day five, and then we loop it back. Same thing if you didn't want to do, let's say you want two sciences, or let's say I want to start science, and then I want to do a history, and then I'd really rather hit language next before I bounce back to science, and then I hit geography. So you can literally put this however you want. Whatever you think you want to hit most often, or maybe you just want to try to hit these one time a week. You don't have one that you want to for sure hit. Either way, we're looping back after we've went through the list. And there could even be something that's called a mini loop, which I'll touch on in just a little bit, but it's the same thing. It's, it's something you want to hit often, but not necessarily even every week. So maybe it's just like a monthly thing, like every other week you want to hit art study. Every other week you want to hit music study. So you could write those mini loops down also. So if you have a mini loop, it's things you want to hit occasionally. So let's put art, let's put music, let's put could even be that you have um, a different curriculum that isn't necessarily something or an activity book that isn't necessarily something that you want to hit every single week. A subscription box. Ooh, that's a good one for me for sure. Put that in a mini loop and I would do that. Okay, when I come around to wanting this mini loop, I'm going to go to art. The next time I hit this mini loop, I'm going to go to music. The next time I hit, I'm going to do an activity. I'm gonna do a subscription box and then I'm gonna loop back to this. This can change, this mini loop can, as you're going through your seasons. So now that we know what a loop schedule and a block schedule somewhat consist of, let's go to step one. Step one, you're going to write down everything you're doing in a normal week, okay? This is for one week, okay? what you're actually doing, not what you want to do, not what you think you're going to do, what you actually do in a normal week. Okay. So I've wrote all of these things down. This is what we are doing in a week. Okay. And we actually just started, I forgot to write this down because we just started that last week. So let's go ahead and write all of these things down that we do in a normal week, okay? I'm gonna add um, independent reading because that is something that we do every week. Now, it's possible I've forgotten something here and you'll find that as you're going through your schedule, okay? So you've wrote down everything that you do in a week. Now, something that maybe you're like, what do we do in a week, you know? Because there's been definitely times like that with us where. I don't know what we do in a week. And so go back, reference that planner if you have one. Um, if you don't have a planner, then just start with today, okay? Let's write down, what are we doing today? Keep up a list of what you're doing for one week, okay? If you're at that stage and you don't know what you're doing, also keep an idea of, let's go to number two, okay? We want to time ourselves how much time are we spending on these subjects, all right? If you don't know how much time you're spending, take a week and time yourself. Let's go to number one. I've got all about reading. So I'm going to look. How often am I doing all about reading? And how much time are we spending for all about reading? So for me, that's 20 to 30 minutes and I'm usually doing this three times a week, okay? Spelling. I'm going to say that normally takes somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes, and I'm doing that four times a week. I'm going to go through each one of these, and I'm going to write that down. Again, this isn't what we want to do. This isn't our, like, dream 
the schedule, this is what's actually occurring. Because this, we have to know what we're actually doing before we can make bigger and broader plans. Sometimes we may realize our bigger and broader plans, there's no way we can actually get all of those things done in a day. So let's go back and I'm going to write down how long I spend and how often I do this. All right, so I've went down here, went through. I've evaluated how long that we tend to spend on each one of these. This isn't usually something you can just do in one day unless you've already been timing yourself and you've already been aware of what you're kind of doing. So you, this is gonna possibly take a week to get an idea of this is how long we're spending on All About Reading and this is how many days that we're usually doing it in a week. Now, the next thing you can do is you can look up this time and you can see, okay, if we do this, this isn't adding in any playtime, which I'm actually wanting to prioritize. So I'm gonna add that in there. This is a time where you can look at some things that you would like to add in there after we figure out what is the minimum and maximum time that we're doing school if this is what we're doing. So now that I've evaluated everything that we're doing, I went down and I've put how much time we usually spend on that subject and how often I look that if I was doing all of this every day, I'm looking at probably about four and a half hours per day on a minimum to seven hours a day maximum, okay? That's if it all stayed. Now that's a lot of time, but guess what? Every single one of these things aren't being done every day because I'm implementing this loop schedule and that helps make sure that I'm hitting these things. Science is only being done once a week. Story of the world is being done only once a week. Studies weekly, geography, physics, those things are only being done once a week. So even though I added them in to my whole day, it's good to get an idea of if I tried to do everything that my brain thought we should be doing every single day, seven hours a day is insane for me. That just isn't gonna work. That's not gonna leave any room for playtime, which I want to prioritize. She needs downtime, she needs playtime. Um, I also don't even have any like outside nature time on here, which needs to be added in also. So this gives you an idea and helps you to see, whoa, I can't do all of this on a day. And that's where that loop schedule comes in. That's where we start highlighting things, okay? So let's go to number three. We've looked at what we're doing in a week and we can see what is feasible, okay? What can we really do in a day? And that's where you look at what is the most important things, okay? So for me, reading is really important. I want to set a time time for reading, whether that be independent reading or that be all about reading our curriculum. Those things, that's a that is a core subject for me. I want that to happen on a daily basis. Okay, what else is important to me? Math. I want to make sure that I am schooling with math every single day in some way on a homeschool day. So I can look at primary, logic, times tales, uh, Beast Academy isn't on here. So see, I keep forgetting things. Um, Beast Academy, and that's where you do your this is where you're gonna check yourself more than once also. So my final project, I have all of this, but as I'm working with, with you, then I'm not getting that. So I'm gonna just put 20 to 30 minutes. And that's one of those things, it really just depends on how often I'm doing primary. So you're gonna kind of work with those things, okay? So I'm gonna highlight that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those as different colors because that's gonna help me block some of these things together. Okay, what else do I feel is important in my homeschool day? I wanna make sure that she's practicing the piano every day so I can put that down here. Um, and then I also want to, and writing. 
Okay, writing is the next one, and that can encompass a spelling, cursive, um, the Beowulf grammar, whatever you kind of think of as like writing. I think I when I think of writing. I'm kind of thinking of like our grammar, our actual writing, our handwriting, um, a spelling, things to make us write well. That is something else that I want to hit on a daily basis. So I kind of have three to four things here that I want to happen every single day of our homeschool. Okay, so those things I have put a little line with and that has kind of blocked those together. Okay, now everything that doesn't have a highlight with it, those are things that we're doing that I want to do, but might not necessarily need to be done on a daily basis. So therefore, I can start looping those things. So anything that doesn't have a mark is going to be a loop. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these yellow so that I know I want these things to happen, but it doesn't have to happen every single day of the homeschool day. Now that I have highlighted all of these things that didn't get put with my core, and that's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to decide what is your core. Your core may not be my core. You may need to add something here. You may need to take something away, and that's where you're gonna decide what is your core things. After you have listed your core things, everything else is we want to do it, but it's not core. It doesn't have to get done every single day. So I go through and I look at my loops. What? Is there something that you want to get done more often? Is there something, that, will some of these be mini loops? So that's where I start looking at those and how often do I want to add those things in. Then we're going to block these other schedules together, okay? So now let's just go to my reading block, okay? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a language arts, okay? I'm gonna do a language arts, which for me is going to include all about reading. I'm gonna go down here. What else do I have, the green? Okay, independent reading, and then my language arts, I'm also going to throw that in with my writing stuff. So that is going to all become one now. So we have um, spelling, cursive, I go through here, and Beowulf. This is all becoming a block now. Can I feasibly do all of these things in one day? Yes and no. So if my answer is yes, then you're going to put your time here and you're going to know, okay. So I see over here that my um, All About Reading is going to take somewhere between 30 and min 20 and 30 minutes. My Independent Reading is going to be anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. My spelling is going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Cursive is usually about 10 minutes. And Beowulf grammar, we're spending about 20 to 30 minutes on. So I can look and I can see, all right, I need to plan on spending 70 minutes on language arts. Now, does that mean you need to sit down and do all of your language arts in one sitting? No, you don't have to. You can take up breaks, however you need to do that, but that's giving you an idea of your language arts block is gonna take about 70 minutes. Now I said that's a core for me, so I need to put out that much time. Now on this right here, if we're doing all about reading and the lesson has a story in it, I'm not gonna have independent reading that day. So that would kind of fluctuate the timing. If our All About Reading does not have a story, then she is going to have some independent reading time. So it will fluctuate a little bit. It won't always be 70 minutes, but that is just kind of a base time that I can start scheduling around and know this is where I have this day that's going to take 70 minutes. All right, what is my next important thing? It's going to be math. 
okay? I wanna make sure that I'm doing math. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm going to reference. I have my primary, I have a logic, I have a beast academy, I have times tales, okay? That is our core math that we're doing right now. Are we doing this every single day, every single one of these? No, we are not. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some time in here. Primary, I'm gonna spend 30 to 45 minutes on. I know that I wanna spend at least an hour on math-related subjects every single day. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right there, okay? And then I can kind of build off of these things. Logic usually takes about 10 minutes. Beast Academy, we usually spend 20 to 30 minutes on. And Times Tales could be anywhere from 10 to 20, honestly, if she's watching the video, but most of the time, 10 to 15 minutes. Now I wanna spend an hour in math. So maybe we're gonna, almost always, we're gonna have logic in there. We're gonna do mind benders, okay? That's not necessarily math, but it's critical thinking and I kind of throw that in with a math block, okay? So I have my logic here and then I'm going to do either primary or Beast Academy. I'm not gonna do primary and Beast Academy normally. Now there has been, I wish there was just a, I could tell you this is always how it's gonna be, but it's not. It's not always gonna be like that. And this kind of helps you get things done. And you can just kind of evaluate your homeschool. So I wish mine was a little more streamlined so I could be like, oh, this is how you do it. This is how, but that's not how it is. And it's likely not like that for you either. So the other day, for instance, we started primary math subject. It was on division. And as you know, we had been doing primary 2022 last year. Primary 2022 is behind scope and sequence to the rest of the Singapore math. We didn't cover multiplication. We didn't cover division. So when we come in here to primary original, we're on division and we're actually already carrying over. We are, we have a remainder. We're carrying in multiplication. We have a remainder in division. Well, we didn't even learn division to begin with, which means I needed to jump over here to Beast Academy. So we started talking about division, but we needed to get some more going. So we've jumped over and we're doing Beast Academy so that we can learn the beginning steps of division before we come back over here to primary. Now there will be different times that these are flip-flopping and that's fine, but pretty much I want to spend one hour on math. How am I going to do that? Right now, the last couple weeks, it's been logic, Beast Academy, and Times Tales. So this Times Tales is just kind of putting in that really solidifying our multiplication facts and Beast Academy is teaching us our division and logic is getting us critically thinking. That is my math block, okay? I hope this is making sense. If you are enjoying this, if this is helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button, give me that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Drop me a line down in the comments. It helps push my channel out and it just helps me a lot and it helps me know that you guys are enjoying what I've got coming for you. All right, next. Writing already kind of went up into the reading section. That's what all of these were. So I created that. And then I'm not necessarily going to create a piano block, but I am going to keep it in mind whenever we get to the actual scheduling. All right, now let's move over to our loops, okay? So I have science. I have story of the world. I have a geography. Physics is actually just a little activity book. And so this is going to be morning time. This is going to be morning time. This is going to be morning time. This is morning time. This is morning time. Some people may call it the morning basket, whatever you want. This is how we start our morning off. So let's go back here. I got ahead of myself. I create a morning block also, okay? So I just label it morning block. 
This is a big block of time for me and I usually have about an hour and a half to two hours that I set aside to do my morning time, which consists of an animal study. Because if you've been around here very long, you know I have an animal lover. She wants to be a vet or something like that. And then we are doing Spanish and we have some Bible or devotional time. And then I throw a loop in there, okay? All of this is done in the morning and it is taking up a span of about an hour and a half, okay? So with this, my loop is going to consist of what we were writing back here. We're, we have science, a story of the world, um, maybe studies weekly. I'm actually kind of putting that on the back burner right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it here for right now. So that is everything highlighted is on here. These are loops, okay? Loops. These are the things that's gonna come back around. Now, do I want to do science once a week? Do I wanna do story of the world once a week? How often do I do these? So I look back and I see that I'm doing this once a week, I'm doing this once a week, once a week, once a week. So I think I can do these once a week. I have four here. We generally school four days a week. So most of the time we start story of the world on day one, we do science day two, we do geography day three, and we do studies weekly day four. This, it changes. And so you look and decide what works best with your schedule. For me, Tuesdays are an open day for me. I have more time to spend on homeschooling. And so I usually throw science in on Tuesday, which is why it's day two. Now, as a loop, it won't always be like that. So you may have to kind of move that around. We just started Sassafras Science and Botany and we're really, really liking that. And so I may move that over into that where we're hitting it more. Maybe we're gonna do science on Monday or number one, number two, then we're gonna hit history. Then I'm gonna do a geography and then I'm gonna loop it back around because like I said, I'm gonna take Studies Weekly out for a little bit because it is actually mirroring geography right now. We're in the unit of geography. So this is getting skipped for right now and this is where your loops can change, your whole schedule can change. Again, it looks like a hot mess, but once you actually get it going, it's so smooth and it works beautifully. Now you're gonna try to create yourself a little schedule, a little example of where can I make this work? And this is all personal, okay? I don't know your schedule. I don't know what works for you, what doesn't work. So I can only show you how I am kind of implementing this and maybe it can help you out. So none of my days are the same because I work, we do different things out of the house. And so this just isn't something that I can say, oh, this is what we do Monday through Friday. We don't. And so if you have a chaotic homeschool too, know that you're not alone. So most of the time I am out of the bed at 6 a.m. I'm making my husband's breakfast, his lunch for him to take to work. And then I have just a little bit of time that I kind of just look at Instagram, see if there's any videos I wanna watch, sit and read. Really, I'm usually sitting and reading these days. And then I'm working out at 7.30, I'm getting ready. She is awake by 8 a.m. almost all the time. She's getting up even earlier than that now. She just has free time. If she wakes up at seven, then she's got free time. If she wakes up at eight, she doesn't have as much free time because we're starting at 8.30. 8.30 is where I'm starting my morning basket, my morning loop, okay? So that is where I don't wanna just jump in and do a bunch of craziness. So we start out with Bible. We do something on our animal study and this is where I'm kind of throwing in that mini loop, okay? So we have a vet book that we really like. We had a vet academy that we were doing. We have a horse book that we are reading and so I will kind of mini loop those, okay? I'm trying not to put too much into this, but I also wanna give you guys 
options for getting all the things done that you want to do. So on day one, we might do one vet book. On day two, we might do a different vet book. On day three, we'll do the horse book. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to rotate those again. Now, you also probably saw physics. That's that activity book. Well, guess what? It's part of this mini loop. Okay, so I actually, I'll do physics and then I'll go back to this vet. Or I can throw these in anywhere. Maybe I want to do vet, physics, vet, horse. You know, whatever works. So I have this like mini loop built in here that I really didn't talk about right there. Then on Mondays at 10 o'clock, I have work that I do. Okay, so I am working from 10 to 10.40. During that time, she has some free time on Monday. So she's doing some free time and she's getting ready for her piano lesson that starts at 10.30. So at 10.30, she's getting herself started at piano. I'm getting out about 10 minutes later and she's doing piano until 11. Now at that time, I'm prepping for our language arts block because that's what I have coming next. From 11 to 12.30 is our language arts block. That's where we're gonna be doing all about reading, maybe some independent reading. We're gonna be doing spelling, we're gonna be doing cursive, and we're going to be doing Beowulf, okay? That leaves in that amount of time to do these things as needed, okay? Then we're gonna to go to lunch break, and I have 12.30 to 1.30, we're doing a lunch break and we have a read aloud time in there. So that's where we're kind of just, she's playing and I'm reading aloud. If there's something that I really, really need to get done, then I will omit this read aloud and I'll go do some laundry or I'll get some dishes done, something like that. But that's an hour time, maybe we'll go outside. We don't always read aloud. You don't have to be this strict but I'm in a season of life right now where I need a really smooth rhythm, okay? Doesn't mean it's always happening like this. After lunch, we're coming back for math and logic, and that's where I have one hour time of we're going to be spending some time doing math, which is right here, okay? Most days, we're done at 2.30, that is what has happened with this. We're starting at 8.30, we're done with 2.30. 2.30, that means if we need to do some things out of the house, we can go run some errands. If we wanna spend some time outside, we can. If we wanna do a subscription box or an experiment, you know, whatever. But from 2.30 on, she usually has free time, except she is doing piano again in the evening. Tuesday is a time where I have a little bit more time. I don't have as much stuff going on. So again, we're going with the same thing. If I'm waking early, I'm working out at 7.30. It's not always a big workout, but I'm moving by 7.30. Sometimes earlier, we're starting at 8.30. I really like having this morning loop of 8.30 to 10. Then we have our 10 to 10.30. She's gonna take a little break and she's gonna practice her piano. The piano time is usually only 10 to 15 minutes at a time, but she does it multiple times a day. I'm going into my language arts block and Tuesday is my writing day. So I'm gonna try to have any writing projects on Tuesday. That way, if it takes more time, I'm, I have more time to just work with things like that. So if it needs to go over, it can. 12.30 to 1.30, we have our lunch, and then we move over into our logic and our math. Now, if I notice that our math isn't working great in the afternoon, I've got a little idea up here of maybe I'm gonna move our math and logic from 10.30 to 11.30. We're gonna have like a little maybe project or game that we can play before we go to lunch from 12 to 1. And then I do my language arts block from 1 to 2.30 again. Are we gonna do a subscription box? Are we gonna be out of the house? Whatever it is, and then about five o'clock, she's gonna come and do her pre piano, okay? But this is it. So create this little schedule, this little mock schedule for yourself. Try it out. Is it working? Is it not working? What do we need to change? Um, do we see where we could add something? Is it maybe a little bit too much time? Is our language arts block too much for your student? If it is, 
let's slim it down, loop some things. Like maybe it's too much to do all about reading that often. Maybe grammar is too much every day. You decide and then make those mini loops. And all you have to do is make yourself a list and just check it off. Okay, we did this one, we did this one, we did this one. Now we're going back to the next one. So you implement your rhythm, you try it for a week, make changes, decide what worked, what didn't, and then just go with it from there. And it just really, really helps to make sure that you're accomplishing the things that you wanna do and you're doing them as often as is feasible, okay? Yes, it would be cool to be able to hit everything every single day. That is not an option for me. It doesn't work. And by writing everything out like this and seeing the time, it really can help drive it home for you that, whoa, we can't do this. That's seven hours of schooling. We don't want to do that. Or maybe you do. I don't. I like this four and a half hour day. I feel that we have really accomplished something and it's a good, good day of school. So I hope this helped. I hope that it did. It really is helping me. Um, I've been doing the loop schedule for quite a while, but I've started this, uh, but I've just recently started including the block schedule with it that just, I like to just lump it all in instead of being so loosey goosey, do a little bit here, do a little bit there. Sometimes we'll get to the end of the day and I'm like, ugh, we did all the fun things this morning and now I don't wanna do all the hard things. And so by kind of taking the hard things and splitting them into different blocks, you're not emptying your tank before the end of the day. And that is one of the main reasons that I'm evaluating our math. If math isn't working in the afternoon, then I'm gonna bump it up some because I want the mental load to be spread across the day and for the fun things to be sprinkled throughout the day too. So thank you for coming on this journey with me. I hope it has been informative again interact with me, give me those thumbs up, hits those subscribe buttons, put something down in the comments for me. It's so incredibly helpful. And thanks again for joining me. Give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye friends.